Pete Burns has been pushing back the gender barrier for at least as long as boy George and Marilyn. He's now made it onto Top of the Pops, demonstrating once again, perhaps, that for the record buying public, the image is almost as important as the sound. Even girls who wouldn't be seen dead in exotic places like the Batcave seem to approve of the look and the attitudes behind it. Far from thinking men in skirts and makeup are weird, a lot of more conventional looking girls reckon there's something positively healthy about the gender benders. Take this bunch of rock fans waiting by the stage door of the Dominion in the West End. If I see a guy without any makeup now and, you know, he goes down the street thinking he's, you know, it, I, I just pass him by. But if, if I see a guy with makeup, I really admire him, you know, because it shows that he's got character. A guy without makeup is really nothing nowadays. Mm. You think that it's only the macho types that don't wear it, but they're probably too frightened not to wear it. After all, it's only like people are conditioned into thinking that they shouldn't, like, like guys shouldn't wear skirts, because after all, in ancient Egypt, they wore both, didn't they? I mean, it's only since that you've been brought up and conditioned into thinking that you shouldn't wear it that people say think it's wrong, and I think that's really biased. Nowadays, people can be individuals. I mean, the woman hasn't just got to sit at home with the baby. She can stand up and say, look, I'm going out to work, I wear these clothes, you do what you want. You want to wear your makeup, your clothes, you do so. So it's just pure individuality. For the time being, the focus of the gender bender movement in the public mind remains the pop business. personal style is far less cosy and more controversial than that of his chart rivals. Pete lives in Liverpool and developed his look away from the London club scene. We've been going for five years and never pushed the image forward really. All of a sudden everybody's jumped on it, you know. We're the last to be on earth for the image thing and you realise just how superficial but important it really, really is. Before that, it was very unsafe to go, you know, on the street and things. Um, people would try and assault you and things. I mean, I've never actually had any bad incident happen. Um, but there's a lot of near misses, you know. It's constantly living on the edge, really, and of course, Getting things as boring as your home, I mean, your neighbours go a bit cocky around you if you're living in a flat and everything. They just expect people who look like this to be into, you know, shagging dogs and things. I don't know who would probably bleep that and, you know, uh, dancing around fires at midnight naked. People have a... Your average everyday person has a very warped view of what your appearance actually represents. They can't believe that you just are quite a normal everyday person. They think it's all to do with what you do in bed. In one way, I think it's really healthy that uh, men aren't feeling that they've got to live this silly, silly masculine image. I mean, a lot of intelligent people you meet think it's great, but then a lot of real... It's quite hard to explain, but I think a lot of people go, go the wrong way. A lot of people, I mean, I see maybe out of this movement, if it does grow bigger and bigger and bigger, there'll be a lot of people on the operating table becoming new April Ashleys who didn't really mean to be like that. Because there's always somebody who's got to push it further, you know? I mean, it was someone the other day was talking about some transsexual cabaret artist saying, oh, what a talent. Somebody at a record company is saying, what a talent, because they actually think that, you know, the next thing's going to be sex change ops that might be pop stars, because it's like, it's in the middle now, you know? It's men looking like women, so there's got to go one way or the other. It's got to progress, I think. If it gets any bigger, then you'll start getting some casualties. I mean, just like in the 60s, you've got acid casualties. I think in 1984, if this movement goes, you'll get sex change and hormone casualties, you know. Are you likely to be one of those people? Uh are you likely to be one of those people? I'm a married man. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> do not talk about me like that. No, I, I, I'm completely secure in what I am, but I don't think that there's, I mean, there's obviously people who, you know. <laughs> Pete Burns didn't create his image just to sell records, but he's the first to admit that the publicity it brings hasn't hurt the sales figures. And as long as the gender-bender issue is under discussion, the music industry will exploit it in whatever way it can. Toy hasn't written it down on a pad yet. No, I didn't read it. It's, <laughs> it's by uh, I can't read it right. Right, I'll offer it to you. Do you know who it's by? Uh, yeah. Sam the Shrimp. Excuse me, you're so busy reading Toy's pad. Right, right, let's have a look at the scores <laughs> at the end of that round. Three to Toy. A little bit of a low-scoring first round. Uh, four. <laughs> right. Well, it's going. Um, who the interviewer is interviewing? 
Toy and Cow, your clip comes first. Now, it's, uh, it's Terry Wogan who's asking the questions and managing to leave his own knees alone for a whole minute. Mm. I'm the shock horror probe of the year in Pop 19. I think you might be... Pop is in 1976. They've hardly changed at all, either of them, have they? Right, let's have a look at the scores at the end of that round. Uh, right, coming up next on... Uh, something which... Is, well, we roll two videos simply when you're trying to work the rest of it out. OK? <laughs> Toya and Co, here it all comes. And remember, the clues... Um, tell me the song that was playing first and foremost. Toya, if you want to do it that way. Talk, talk. Life's what you make it. OK, good. For a point. Right. Uh, tell me the two videos in there. Um, Pet Shop Boys, Streets With No Name. Or Streets... Yes, yeah, Streets With No streets Name. Streets With No Name. Streets Don't home. say that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. I say nothing. And what's, um, what's, um, what's sure the other one? And the other one's Genesis, We Can't Dance. OK. Any thoughts on that, you guys? Never was a conflict. Talk, talk. Right. Um, Miles... Mm. Points! Who's been out on um, Mars? Yeah. Okay, uh, ten plays nine. Uh, David, your ten. <laughs> right, Mars. And despite the limitation, it is Blobby, Blobby, Blobby. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing to know the Mr. I, Blobby I, I, lyrics. I that. Nobody's I mean, ever I built a Manic Street it. Preachers yeah. theme park, have they? <laughs> right. Let's uh, go on to you, Rich. Here we go. Uh, no way. It's impossible. It's to not stay. Brotherhood of Man. Save all your kisses for me, is it? <laughs> I'm afraid it is. Oh. <laughs> Let's have a look at the scores. Miles' his team now, Miles, Martin and Richie, now taking a huge lead now, thanks for their knowledge of uh, Brotherhood of Man and Mr Blobby. Then I go to 15. <laughs> right, next one's another individual. Obscurely, more often, very obscurely, on the clip that they've just seen. We... <laughs> So you do know more than Mr Blobby and Brotherhood of Man on your side. Right, Martin, uh, this is a video... Hey, Bush. <laughs> In this bro... <laughs> <laughs> um, Easter's on its way. No, um... not <laughs> no it, I'll give it to you. It's the Last Temptation. The Last Temptation of Christ is right, what well happened? <laughs> Sledgehammer's right for a point, what well happened? That's why you're team skipper, for it. Right, Miles, you're next. Springfield from 1969, looking a bit like something out of Stingray. Billy Ray was a preacher's son. Man of the Year, son of a preacher man, was a hit. What was Dusty's other big top ten hit? Well, it was 1965 and it was I Close My Eyes and Count to Ten, Chris Tarrant. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually 1968, but you're, you are right for a point. Well done. Well, I Terribly well done. Year, I mean, Right, second point then, Pete Burns. OK, Chris Tarrant. Who did she collaborate with on her 1987 hit? The Patch Up Boys. Do what I, I need to deserve skip in the question? This. Patch Up Boys is right, what well up for another point? <laughs> right, finally for you, Richie. Yeah, we okay. haven't done the proper Kylie question all serious, so you've Thank got you. it. <laughs> for a bonus point to the other side. Ooh. One and two are albums by... Mike hey, Oldfield. Mike Oldfield is right. Who had a hit with Soul Man in 1967? Uh, Martin. Sam and Dave. Sam and Dave's right. <laughs> Axel Rose, the lead singer with which band? David. Guns and Guns Roses. Roses. Well done. Marmalade and the Bedrocks released the same Beatles cover in the same year. David. Oh, bloody, oh, blada. Oh, bloody, oh, blada. What do you say for a minute? <laughs> right, four left. Who was the lead singer with Generation X? Martin. Billy Idol. Billy Idol's right. Three left. Uh, 24 plays 33. Whose hits include YMCA and In the Navy? Miles. Village People. Yeah. Uh, 99 Red Balloons was a number one hit for who? Miles. Mm. Nana. Mm. Yes. Nana's right. Last one. <laughs> Complete the lineup. Huey Lewis and the news. The news is right news. for two points. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's have a look at the final scores. Uh, Not now, Pete. <laughs> oh, but Toya, Pete, and David ended up with 33. <laughs> We leave you for the... For our second album, which was Youth Play, lots of producers were suggested, like Langer and Win Stanley and a lot of other people who I wasn't interested in and I kept hearing this one record on the radio every morning when I woke up which was Hazel Dean's Wherever I Go, Whatever I Do 
And it just seemed to have the sound that I wanted. And then I heard the Divine single, You Think You're a Man But You're Only a Boy. And that had the sound that I wanted. And I went to CBS and said, we want to work with the producers who did these records, which was Stock Aiken and Waterman. Pete Burns says, we did this demo at the weekend. What do you think? And he plays me, spin me round. And I go, thank you very much. Let's do this. The Dead or Alive record was to give the team their first number one hit. But what we gave them on the Spin Me Round demo was very, very close to the completed thing. And what he did was assist us in our creative battle with Mike Stock and Matt Aitken to keep it that way. It was the worst recording session in the history of my life. Oh, my God. The fight between Matt and Mike and Pete and Steve and the band was horrendous. I was having calls from Pete Burns saying you come and get these guys out of here now. Well that is complete Pete Waterman fantasy. It never really did get to that level because if it had got to the idea of fisty cuffs it would have been with Mike Stock and Matt Aiken and we'd have had no qualms about actually beating the living daylights out of them. I said to Matt and Mike, go home now, away go. Leave this to me, I'll sort it out. I said to Pete Burns and Steve and the band, go home. Go home, I've had enough. You can't, we can't go on like this. We stayed in there till the bitter end, and it wasn't very pleasant. And I wish that I'd been one of those airheads that had just gone off shopping or gone and starred in a soap or something like that. We were fine-tuning, probably than I'm, more than I've ever fine-tuned anything in my life, but there was something about this record that you could just shave a bit here and a bit more there. And I always remember I said to Phil, that's it, fantastic, that's it. We were so bewildered. We didn't think we were going to have a record that big. And nothing ever prepares you. Unless you're one of these stage school kids, like the Jasons and the Kylies. Nothing ever prepares you for the fact your life is going to change, probably forever. Whatever records he ever brings out, even if he has like 15 number ones, that record is going to be there for the rest of his life, whether he likes it or not. And that's the record that made him. And that is a disco classic. I still think you can't fault it as a pop record. And I definitely would say that without him involved, that record would have never been like that. He wanted what I wanted. We found ourselves in January with a number one record that sold vast amounts. Which is very special. And when Matt and Mike first came to the studios and they were playing things to Pete, and Pete would say, can you play that song? They would know the, the real little bits and, and the, the odd chords that were in the pop tunes that really make those pop tunes. We met Pete first, he was this larger than life character, very up, very bubbly. Um, we took to him immediately actually, and then we were taken upstairs to meet Mike and Matt. And at that time the studio was very, very quiet, you know, it, it was just the three guys, a few tape hops and stuff like that. Pete went back to the studio and apparently he said to Mike and Matt, we need something that's got balls, we need something tough. With showing that Get Fresh, it just had all these one, you know, it had all these sounds and then it had show, show, show. So it was just kind of like, what is this? If you went to any club on a Friday night, you'd see 50 Melon Kimps. It was, it, they, they were doing what was happening in, in, in the clubs and their look was what was happening at that time. Kim always told me she worked in a knicker factory and, and Nell was a topless model. It was, you know, from obscurity to pop royalty. Showing that had become a huge hit. We were everywhere now and everyone was starting to get interested in us. So I took an advert in, in Music Week, which is the big trade paper. You can love us, you can hate us, you ain't ever going to change us, we ain't ever going to be respectable. And we walked into the studio and up on the monitor was respectable. And we were like, oh, is that the next single? And I said, yeah. Mike had come up, I think it was Michael or Matt, I actually don't know because I wasn't there, but they, they'd come up with this little, hey, 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 hey. I always remember, I played it, and I thought it was marvellous. 
Nikki said, I hate that. Take it off the record. That's the only time I ever knew Mike Stock in all the years I worked with him say, you take that off or it don't work here anymore. I'm telling you, that's the gimmick. Mel and Kim had established us as pop producers with an edge. I mean, you know, here we were, the biggest selling act and the newest. And so much that we put it down to the dance routines. And the crunch came really was when we went to Japan and we went there to do some promotion. She couldn't move, she was in too much pain. Um, and what should have been, I think, a, a seven day trip turned into three weeks because we couldn't move Melanie until she was well enough. And I think at that point it was kind of obvious that something wasn't right. She'd been to see this one particular doctor that saw a slight shadow on her, on the back of her spine. He referred her to Bart's. Uh, 10 days later, we were given the results that she'd, um, <clears throat> that she had cancer of the spine. She's brave, she's strong, she was great. She wasn't bitter. I think, you know, it was hard for her um, not being out there because she really enjoyed performing and singing. God knows where we would have ended up if Mel had not, have, you know, suffered with cancer. I mean, they had the world as their oyster. Drama were talked about like they were scum on somebody's show. Now, I'm not saying that isn't my opinion, or it is my opinion, but I know that they were written off as a joke. He took them to another level. Suddenly, everybody started saying how fantastic Banana Armour were. Venus gave Stock Aitken Waterman. Carrying on, trying to make things look okay. Mike Stock was still there, but the atmosphere was so bad that we just didn't want to go into that studio. It wasn't very productive to any creativity. I remember a day in this building when the artist or you didn't, the record. We must, we must do Kachis. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, you've got uh, a compilation of greatest hits, a greatest hits package called Evolution coming out. And I think that comes out on April the 17th, Yeah. I'm thinking. It's uh, not so much being released, it's escaping. Because it's been delayed many times. Yeah. But, but, I mean, there is genuinely a lot of excitement because what you've done is for April the 7th, you're bringing out uh, You Spin Me Round again. There's, but this isn't, you're not re-releasing it, you've done it again. Um, yeah, we re-recorded it, so it's a reproduction, just like I am. <laughs> <laughs> but it does still, it does still sound like. I know, and I'm. So, I've got such a strong voice that when I was in the studio, <laughs> went through all kinds of machines, and it still came out sounding. Uh, so the this record apparently it's number one on all the club kind of pre-release charts and everything. It's, it's no response. Yeah, from the, from but yet with the radio isn't playing and we will hear it at the end of the show and it's actually the sort of sound that's really big at the moment it's and so i don't quite understand why the radios aren't playing it the first time around when i initially made that record which was it was actually 1984 that record was 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 made and it got no response from radio and then in 1985 when it was actually, it was not really supported by radio in a heavy way i just think that i freak people out a little bit and they don't want to expose the nation's youth to people like me because they think I'm going to be really, really strange and unusual. And but the actually was a guest on Blue Peter. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And the things Blue Peter made me do when I was a child. Remember that tortoise they had called Fred? Not right. I painted my tortoise. It was a lady, but I painted it <laughs> Fred, and it died because it was lead-based paint. <laughs> <laughs> and we laugh. Uh, no, don't do that. It's wrong. Well, listen, we hope we hope this will be a, a number one again because you'll hear it at the end, and it is. It's brilliant. It's one of my favourite songs ever. <laughs> um, oh, no, this is. What did I want? Ooh, why do I want to see this? Oh, I know why I want to see this because right. It's got a baby photo. Yeah, in this yeah. is dead or alive. Now, there's people now, and 
here is how nature intended. Yeah. Oh, cool. And you look only went a little bit. There's not that much difference if you look at all the dimensions as uh, nature intended. <laughs> well, no, there you were at the time. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, have you, I suppose. Have you? I suppose. What we're, have you finished? Oh no. No. What oh, no. next? It depends on the boredom factor. You, it's very difficult for people to understand something like this, but in the 80s when I became a pop star, I was a pop singer when I began. I had a number one record, I was a pop star. I saw myself on the front of so many, so many magazines, on TV all the time, and I got really bored of looking at the same face, and I'm sure most people do get bored of looking at the same thing. That's why women bleach their hair, that's why women buy makeup, that's why men grow a beard, that's why they shave the beard off. And I just got really bored, and when I'm bored with things, I um, alter them. And, 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 and <laughs> this is no, but it's, it's no attempt on your part. It's not about masculine, feminine. You're not trying to become a woman in any way. I think if I was gonna try and become a woman, I know enough about women to be a darn sight better woman than this. <laughs> I could be a very good woman because I know all the trickery and everything that they do to build that image. I have no intention to be it. In fact, I've got an absolutely ginormous knob. Hooray! <laughs> is that dream. natural? Yes, it is natural, <laughs> but I would, never, I would never dream of um, getting rid of that. I'm Venus with a penis. <laughs> Listen, very quickly, two things. Is it true that when you were growing up, you were very influenced by Red Indians? You loved American Indians? Oh, I was absolutely crazy about them. But I lived in a teepee. No, he's not making that up. You did live in a teepee, didn't you? I did, yeah. My mother used to have to bring... I, I went to school very late. Um, and when I did finally go to school, my terms of um, being at the school were that I could have my teepee outside in the playground. So she would roll up at break time and set up the teepee. And I'd take a residence in the teepee <laughs> and take visits from the other children in the teepee. And also I refused to um, remove my Red Indian headdress and walk. But I was deadly serious about that, so that was a sign of something to come, really. It really it? was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. The clues were there. Yeah. But now, do you, now, we were thinking about kind of uh, strange habits, and you do have one other strange habit, the shoe thing. Is that true? Well, do you really want me to be honest with you? Oh, it's not. It is true. It is true, but it used to be changing my nose. Before I had a record, I always, I always used to have some surgical procedure, but obviously I've given up on that. Um, so uh, now it's shoes. I insist on buying at least two pairs of shoes before I have um, a professional showbiz engagement. So are those new shoes? These are my wife's shoes. I couldn't find any good ones yesterday. Oh, actually, can I just say, because there was a bit of a murmur there, because I know that you're married, but you are married and it's all, you've yeah. been married for years. Yeah, I've been married for, uh, I think, 26 or maybe even 28 years. I don't count the years, really, but it's forever. We met when we were 16. That was a very long time ago when I was 16 and she was 16. And now, do you know what she did in the wedding photographs? This is just you no. that's... <laughs> <All right. laughs> she looks a lot better, too, but some of it's bound to rub off, isn't it? I mean, I don't think she's as... She, does, she doesn't have the same um, low boredom threshold with her appearance because she's not exposed in the media but my marriage i keep i keep quite private because she doesn't really want to be famous or anything. it's the best move i ever made you should try it you should get married one day because you everything i'm too selfish it would annoy me i'm terribly selfish do you live with her I've <laughs> no no because i could get married if they live next door or something well the longest time we've ever been apart i think is nine days that's the longest time we've ever been apart is nine days Oh, well, that's now, terrible. You weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> no, you weren't, but you know you can't judge a book. It's cover. <laughs> or it's contents. No, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, talking about uh, the odd behaviour, the shoe thing, whatever, uh, we were inspired by this, and we asked our audience if they had any strange habits. And uh, God knows they do. Where's Roxy Morris? I love Roxy Morris. Where is she? Where's Roxy? Oh, there's Roxy. Hang on one second. I must just go. I'll be back one second. I must go talk to Roxy. Hurry along. I will. Now, Roxy, stand up, too. Stand up, too. So, Roxy, yeah. uh, you 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 say little prayers when you want things to happen. Is that right? While I'm on the toilet. <laughs> you, you pray while you're on the toilet. Yeah. Some people read a magazine. She prays. <laughs> and is it, does it matter whether it's front or back? Does it? Um, <laughs> if I want something really good to happen, I. Number two is normally the best one to <laughs> right. go for. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I've got something that I don't think it's. Very good. That's it. But listen, we're being such a good sport. Anyway, you've got, you've got dinner for two and a night at a top London hotel. Oh, yeah, well done to you, you busy woman. Very good. That's it.
Join myself and Pete after the break when we're improving the audience on No Oil Paintings. I'll see you in a minute. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know. No, I mean, Other she just got... Other beds that are <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. No, she was on here, and she is Doolally, God love her, but... No, yeah. she was very <laughs> undoolally on Larry King. She was very undoolally. I was so disappointed. I loved her when she looked like RuPaul's grandmother, and she was like... <laughs> she went all Jackie Stallone on camera, but she's not like that anymore. She was actually... I stayed up so late last night Jackson. And I thought she was going to lose it on camera, but she wasn't. She was very, very sane. Now, this sounds like such a cliche, but for you, it really is true. Big in Japan. Uh, phenomenally big. And what is, is it, what is it about you, do you think, that they just love? I think that I must represent rebellion to them, because no matter what you see visually um, of Japanese youth, sort of in the fashion sense, and I think that I represent English rebellion to them. They think that I'm really wild and strange and... I love it. Anyway, we've talked about art this evening. We must have mentioned it somewhere. So uh, we asked our audience uh, to think of themselves as a blank canvas. That was the easy bit. And uh, <laughs> then to recreate themselves as a famous work of art. 
So come with me now as we play Framed for a Laugh. It's over here. Oh, you want to come with me? So oh, oh, lovely. Now, if you want to stand here, yeah. uh, you can wait there. And we'll, we'll work our way across. I think this one we might be able to guess. Let's see now. Are you ready? You ready? Ladies and gentlemen, here is Steve Barton recreating a beautiful classic painting. Enjoy. <laughs> Does anyone in the audience today know what her name that is? Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa. Did you, now, Steve, you, I can see you've gone to a lot of trouble to recreate the look in that you put on lip gloss. Um, no, no shaving of chest or face. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, um, that out. When did you first realise you looked very like the Mona Lisa? Monday night. Monday night. <laughs> Who helped you recreate the look here? Girlfriend and neighbours. Drink. This was girlfriend, neighbours, and drink. I think the drink played the largest part myself. Yeah. But uh, well, listen. Well, we do seem to be having our problems with. Uh... Oh, the curtains are slightly drawn. Hang on. I'll just pull that to one side. A step forward so we can okay. enjoy the fruit properly. Can you, can you get in the detail of that fruit? <laughs> yes, ladies in the audience going, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, now, uh, was it hard to cast who would play which fruit? <laughs> no. Mysteriously, that grape is pierced. <laughs> it's like a real tip. <laughs> oh, and, uh, I was going to pull it. <laughs> Actually, that grape looks a bit sore. Could you lift it? Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh, there we go, lovely. Yeah, very good, very good. OK, well done, ladies. Now, I'll just check, we're all set, we're all set. Lovely. Now, of course, we all know, we all know Raphael's Triomphi di Galetta. Oh, of course. Yes, Raphael's Cherub. Well, you love this. Here's Roy Young and his Cherub, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How beautiful is that? Perfection, perfection. Now, come over here. Come over here. Uh, we just need, we just need to select our favourite painting of all. So, uh, now, is there a clear winner for you, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, who's your clear winner? Yeah. What, are we saying the cherubs are winner? He's got to go, oh, because I'm supposed to lead the winner down to the front. <laughs> I'm doing I think, on, I think that's a mistake. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, well done. Yeah, well done, sir. Well done, sir. Congratulations. Currently, of our lovely friend at Specialized.com, you won. Irony of ironies, a top of the range mountain bike. Oh, <laughs> Listen, thank you very much. If you want to go back to your seat there. All right, see you later. Well done, sir. Thank you so much, Pete Burns, for coming along. Now, you've kindly agreed to perform for us, so if you'd like to go and get ready there, Mr. Pete Burns! <laughs> Very good! That's it, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow night at 10, and here, performing their classic hit, You Spin Me Round, is Dead or Alive! Good night, everybody! Bye! -bye. <laughs>
Top Entertainment Stories, a big welcome to Pete Burns. Hi. So, Chicago, do you prefer the musical or the film, given that you were in the musical? It's difficult to say because I feel really protective about the musical, and then when I went to see the film, I, I thought it was brilliant. It was really good. Often they don't transfer onto the screen, you know, uh, you've got a preference, but I think they're both brilliant. And it's great because at the moment in Chicago, I don't think, they, in, in the West End, I don't think they've got a name in it, and it's still packed houses. And that's thanks to the film as well, let's give it another boost. You're dissing Michael Greco? Michael's not in it now, is he? Oh, I see. I think he's left. I could be giving you false information uh, there. I'm not. He's on Broadway, yeah, I think. But uh, Pete, the musical is making a big return. The Phantom of the Opera is going to be in a new movie version, Guys and Dolls. Why is it the time of the musical? You could say it's a case of fiddling while Rome burns. With the political climate that's going on, I think people want jolly distractions to go and see yeah. awful musicals. Don't say awful. Have you seen Chicago? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I just I don't really like musicals. I thought um, you'd be into all that kicking your legs and glamour and uh, uh, all that. <laughs> I, you know, I do like theatre, but the, I, I don't actually got to see Chicago, and I've got no um, interest in seeing the film whatsoever unless somebody's shoving cake down Catherine Zeta Jones's throat. So that's the only <laughs> angle. Because it makes it look like all I do is eat, and that's awful. Because we don't eat in Hollywood, do we? She's pregnant. She's bound to be eating. Oh, good for her. Yeah. <laughs> you met Rennie? I did. I was. Um, I got sent to interview Richard Gere and Rennie Zellweger. She was gorgeous, completely charming. And I didn't like him. Really? No, I did. Have you ever met him? No, I've not met him. Is, was he quite a cold fish? He was so rude. What did he say to you? He was so rude. Well, he's just, you know, he was there to promote the film and everything, and he was just really cool, and, and he just kind of, you know, put little put-downs all the time, and she was so lovely and charming. Did you not show him that picture of you as Roxy? <laughs> 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 We're going to go back to LA now. Alex, as well, also last night in the TV Awards, a very controversial winner in the, the Best Male and Best Actress category. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> 400,000 an episode. Imagine that. No, it wasn't. <laughs> is he worth it? I've got no idea. I don't even know who he is. Sopranos. I don't watch it. Quality show. Very quality. <laughs> Alex, thank you very much for joining us from what well, looks like a greenhouse this evening. <laughs> Now, you're watching Liquid News on BBC Three every day. That's from 7 till Friday at 7 o'clock. Upcoming, Timberlake pipes up for peace. Sonia is the latest to walk from the show, unable to come to terms with the American public, thinking she was as bad as Dollar. Now, this came just days after Ben Jericho's Mark Shaw quit the ITV1 show. But Sonia decided to reboard the nostalgia bus after doing a U-turn at the airport. Jane Goddard has this reality report. Okay, Ken and Waterman star, Pete Burns. You've been watching this show. What's your expert opinion? It's the first one of these shows that I've ever actually watched. I went to bed early on Saturday and just sat there with the TV on. Um, what's my expert opinion? I think it's absolutely a frightful concept. I feel actually very sick for the people that are on the bus. Somebody approached me to do the show. I actually, contrary to popular opinion, do still have a career, so there's no need for me to do this. 
and what they actually promised you is a lot different to what these acts are getting and they put them in some horrendous situations and with dreadful backing tracks the sound is the worst it could possibly be so they all sound like imbeciles but I do feel very sorry for them and I think they're courageous to um, go through with it. I, I think they should all get on a plane home and forget the whole ID and then sell, sell stories to the news of the world and the sun. I think ultimately that would be more profitable than this um, debacle that they're all embarking on. Uh, Clive, when you did um, Celebrity Big Brother, did you feel that they represented you in a fair light? Absolutely. Um, also, bearing in mind, I mean, there's been so many of these celebrity things since I did the first one, which was for Comic Relief, and it was just different. There was a different agenda, I suppose. And I felt safe. It was for charity, and I felt represented well, yeah. That was for charity. But Reborn this is for USA charity. Isn't. Reborn isn't. It is. Their rent. <laughs> <laughs> it's a charity they've all set up. It's for their rent. Um, I, I think it's agonising to watch them, but, the, you know, the guy from Go West and Tony Hadley were very good and Gina G looked very nice and I'm sure she was very good. I mean, good, but not good enough. I can't understand why Elkie Brooks is doing it, though. I think she's fantastic. She still does sell out tours. And, you know, it's kind of making out that they're all has-beens and Elkie Brooks is fab. I think, sorry, sorry, I think it sounds like fun to do it when the agent phones you up. What well, did you get like promised then? You said they were getting promised. Uh, quite a relatively comfortable bus, luxury hotels, a reasonable amount of money and, something I didn't need, a record deal at the end of it. Um, these people are obviously looking for a record deal. And, you know, what are they supposed to do? They have once worked in show business. When the fame goes away, what are they going to do? Sell sandwiches? Well, David Dem Van Day sells burgers. Yeah, but I mean, this is a chance to get <laughs> some kind of endorsement for his burger firm, isn't it? There's nothing else for them to do when they've been famous. There's no going back. They're still famous, or we wouldn't be talking about them, and they wouldn't be on this TV show. But they're getting, like, absolutely crucified because people are saying that they're desperate. They're just trying to keep on making a living. Mm. I mean, if you get the boot from the show, you'll probably go and present some regional rubbish, won't you? We will see <laughs> we'll, we'll <laughs> cross that about, bridge You're not going to get a job it. sweeping streets, are you? Because you worked in TV. Might They've do. worked in the record. I very much doubt it. They've worked in the record industry and they want to be back in the record industry because it is a great place to be. We'll be talking about you and your return to the record industry in and a minute. And my sweeping of streets. Now, another of Ali G's American victims has failed to see the funny side. Feminist Naomi Wolf is reportedly considering legal action after Stain's premier <laughs> export <laughs> persuaded her to rap. <laughs> In pop. I've got no idea. In fact, I've only just become aware of who he is and I actually realise that I do own two of his CDs. I like his records. I know nothing about yeah. him, so it's unfair. He's a talented me. lad. Yes, he is yeah. a very, very, very talented lad. It's it's generic Michael Jackson, but we need a new Michael Jackson because the old one's worn out, don't we? It really reminds me of Michael Jackson, but he's very talented. I've seen him dance and I did see that thing, that Japanese thing, and I just... <laughs> 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 Things happen to you in Japan that you don't think the rest of the world is going to see. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're speaking from experience there. Yeah, I'm absolutely speaking from... They, they do these strange things like speed up your backing tape and uh, you're on a TV show and suddenly a giant tomato runs across the screen and squirts catch up on you. Being in Japan and working in the pot field is a bit like being on an acid trip. <laughs> <laughs> but you just hope it doesn't get out of Japan. You come home and you need mood elevators and three weeks in bed. <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes back to haunt you. Hey, well, this, this is unusual because he's so famous, you know, that this should get out of that country. You do kind of say a prayer that it sits strictly in Japan. <laughs> it's, Pete, it's crazy. Pete, everybody wants to know if that's your real cleavage. It's not cleavage, it's pectoral muscles. Mm. So I there's no support there, though? Support there? Is there any what? support there? No. I'm not wearing a bra, why mm -hmm. are you? No, funny enough. <laughs> I don't need one. Your breast clip. Um, <laughs> I'm not getting into this conversation. You see, the thing about this country is... The, it was a this, random question. The I thing apologize. about this country is, in general, women have never seen good pectoral muscles because most men have saggy old bitch tits. And men are all so unfit and flabby that they see somebody with a really muscular mm -hmm. chest and they think it's a pair of boobs. Immediately drawn to them. They think it's think a pair of boobs. But then again, you Just know, how tits will travel. Yeah, you men are retarded. They see something, it's got two dents and they think it's a cleavage. <laughs> They think that about Jennifer Lopez's bum, don't they? From that, I'm going to move to Kevin Spacey and okay. uh, Kate Winslet, who failed to blow into town for the UK premiere of their death row flick, The Life of David Gale. Rumours are that Kevin is... Celebrity. She just lost her father, didn't she, Gwyneth Paltrow? She did, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. the reason Steven Spielberg's given her away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, Godfather. But also Godfather. Well. Yeah. Sorry, Spielberg's Gwynny's Godfather. Godfather. Oh, really? Mm. 
Pete, you've been married for 23 years. What's the secret to a good celebrity showbiz marriage? Slap them round. <laughs> keep, them, <laughs> keep them in the place. No, it just works for some people, doesn't it? As long as you're not selling your entire marriage to Hello Magazine and you keep it kind of quiet and out of the public eye, you have your disagreements and your dramas, but nobody really knows about them. And I think that it lasts. You know, you become friends as well as husband and wife. That's the problem with most marriages. Men and women aren't really friends. So what one bit of advice would you give Gwenny and Chris Martin? Oh, I could give them no advice. I actually don't really know who either of them are. <laughs> <laughs> I try and not pay attention you to the Coldplay. celebrity thing. You heard Coldplay Is that, do you think, do you think yeah. was your wife there all the way through your career then? Yeah, She's she was there helping me squeeze my teenage spots. Like when the there. single was first released. Oh, she was there well before the single was first released. I think she always kind of knew I was going to be famous or notorious because um, <laughs> I was always a bit Fruity on this the fruity is side. Coming back out again, you spin me right round. Yeah, it's escaping again. Why? Why do you want to do it out? Um, why? Because we did a new record deal. We've survived without a record deal in all kinds of countries and licensed our albums to them. And we just thought that, well, no, actually, the record company approached us to release a Grace's Tits compilation. And obviously, they wanted Spin Me as a single or a cover version. Because this song's been, been around for so long, remixed by a lot of people, we said, can we re record it? And they said, no. So we said, OK, forget it. And eventually they did let us re-record it, it's not a remix. And um, it's a bit like covering yourself because one of the other suggestions was could you do a cover version to launch this album? And because it's an old song and I'm an old pro, um, I covered my own song before somebody else did it. Because Abs did it, I heard that somebody called it. I don't know who Abs five. is, I'm saying Abs used to be great. five. He's very good, Abs. Got no idea yeah. who he is, but we got um, a, a really good version sent to us for approval with somebody rapping and going, yo, oh, and all that all <laughs> over it. And it was by somebody called Abs, and then it didn't come out. He's got abs, you've got pecs. Yeah, I've got abs too. I've got all kinds of Very surprises smooth. going on underneath this suit. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's out on April the 7th. And you've got uh, your yeah, it's well. on April the 7th, and it's like the trailer for the greatest um, hits album. Mm. And no tour of the States needed. I do it. tour the states, but not in not those conditions. Not in a bus. Conditions. No, in those not conditions not anyway. No, I did go on a bus once, on a tour bus. It was Fleetwood Max tour bus, and one of our roadies got the Bombay trot and blocked up the toilet. I was off that bus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was off that bus. No, I was no way. Stevie the whole Nicks thing was covered in. No, Stevie Nicks wasn't on there, but there was Stevie Nicks debris lying around. There were stuffed Sunny. birds and things on the bus. <laughs> I lasted two cities on the bus and then took a plane. Clock coming up, clock told with our featured guest saying, "Don't shut it to the Sweeney." Next. Now she's back on TV, this time as a downtrodden housewife. It's in the BBC Sunday night drama, Clocking Off. And in this clip, see if you can spot where she's hidden one of the sofa cushions. Well, something's upsetting him. I wish you were as concerned about my feelings. Look, I'm not bad. <laughs> oh, gosh, here we go. <laughs> and what happened in the episode then was the drama. The drama is, it's, it's a brilliant story. Um, his brother is slightly retarded and he's in a home and he suspects that his brother's being bullied. Um, so he goes to the home, ends up... Oh, are they coming I've along? I've never done that yet, you know. I've been promising myself that for years. I've got a piano in my flat. Have you, can you play the piano? No, buy a broom. <laughs> buy a broom, buy a broom. <laughs> no, I kind of learned Viennese on the funeral march when I was a child, but I wasn't really interested in doing it. Play London's there. burning. But uh, no, I haven't taken them up yet. Mm -hmm. I keep promising myself piano lessons and Spanish lessons. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this other rumour. Rumor. Are you presenting Blind Date or will you be presenting Blind Date? No, absolutely not. Oh. No, I'm doing another show for the BBC. This called... is the Saturday night? Yeah, show one. here comes the sun. What's um, it about? It's families competing against each other to win a holiday home for two weeks every year of the life for the rest. Every year of the life, yeah? Wait a minute. For two <laughs> the weeks? For the rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives. That's what I can't talk What if tonight. they have to be very old? It's going to cost the TV station a fortune. Absolutely. It's an expensive show to make. They're not going to. It's like that. There's this show in the morning that I see where they offer to pay your mortgage for a while. You know that they're only going to pay your mortgage. You're going to get win if it's like £200 a month. It's dissing your show and it's not even on. They're going to send them on holiday for the rest of their life. Where are they going to send them? What if they want to go they to? They just go to the same place. No, they get an apartment for two weeks every year for the rest of their life. In the same place? Yeah. That's a sentence. That's not a holiday. Why do you go to the same place? <laughs> People We've do that. Move along, when yeah. I was a kid, I went to Tenerife every year for, you know, for about six, seven years. You've come out of it on Enough stage. holiday chat. We are going <laughs> to have to leave it there. We'll see Claire clocking off at two Sunday nights time at nine o'clock. Now, still to come, this dirty scrubs up for Donatella. Style, which doesn't bode well for anyone with shares in the company. Saying it's all beautiful for liquid news, Emma Jones. Aguilera, good move. 
I, I really don't know. I've got no idea. Donatella fascinates me. She absolutely fascinates me. I'm riveted every time I see her. <laughs> I just am. I, I think that she loves her look. We all sit criticising that she loves it and she sticks with that look. What about Aguilera's look? I, I love her look too because I can imagine what it was like when she came back with this video. I know what it's like when you've been away for a while. In show business, if you wait for 10 minutes, people think you're finished. But I know she was like, she took time off, didn't she? Imagine the record company people when she's presented that video to them. They've died. It could have gone either way, yeah. sink or swim. Thank you both very much. That's it from us. But don't forget, you can catch Liquid News six nights a week at 7 over on BBC Three. Tomorrow night's nice show. Sorry, let's talk to why do you think it's so bad? I mean, they must get so many press inquiries. Isn't it the right thing to do to hire a PR? First, we had a press conference where the district attorney decided... No, pointless, really, but it is a Hollywood lawsuit, and people in Hollywood are completely... <clears throat> um, being in L.A., it's a bit like heroin. It feels really nice, and then eventually it kills you. Nobody has any sense of reality. There's no doubt the guy's innocent. Just because he's messed with his face doesn't mean he's a paedophile. But it's turning into... Yeah, they should accompany the whole thing with the song Send in the Clowns, shouldn't they, really? It's a waste of time, and I really, really wish that that part of L.A., that legal system, would fall off the planet. But who do you trust people? Because, I mean, obviously... Michael Jackson. But where are you going for your information? Because, obviously, um, you know, you feel... Where are you going for your information what? to ask questions? I'm doing my best with that. You're not a judge. You're not Judge Judy, are you? No, but then I haven't said he's guilty. I'm just asking you where you think But you best... know. You're a human being. You know... He's not guilty. You know he's not guilty. You know he's an easy target. He's a fool. I'm sorry I love him, but he's a fool. And he makes himself so vulnerable. And if his lifestyle was like one of those absolutely cack videos where he had women sitting around the jacuzzi with big breast implants, drinking sex on the beach drinks and gold chains, although people think wonderful. It's like Marie Antoinette. People want to storm the Bastille and behead him because they're so resentful, but they must remember that they made him what he is. Do you think, when you say you bring up plastic surgery, do you think there's prejudice against him for changing his face? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I meet that all the time, but fuck him. Can we just well, apologise we... wholeheartedly for that language? Uh, but, you know, I'm not saying sorry. It's okay. my face. I'll do what I want to it. Okay. okay. Well, look, it's good to bring the sentiments. And we don't, we don't swear at eight, but we, we wanted what you say. Around. And Steph, uh, will you stay with us? Because Pete will stay longer knowing that you're going to be here yes. coming back later on. She has great eyebrows. She has great everything, that woman. Yeah, she's really, really Steph, lovely. more for you in a minute. Uh, still ahead, Jack Whitestrike claims that this work music all you like because it's time now for our yes. celebrated daily Christmas chart battle update news. Update news. The darkness seen here are still on course for the festive number one slot. The belly of those five. The Darkness, the Bella. I, and the... Well, well, I just absolutely adore the Osborne family. Do you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I particularly adore Kelly. Their family is a very realistic family. It's kind of like my house, but with kind of different swear words. It's a very realistic family. Yeah. It's a very functional family. I absolutely adore that kid, and I think that, that I, I think they're a wonderful family. And number, I don't care if she farts, make it number one. The rest, I've never even heard of them. You see, I don't watch TV very often or listen to the radio unless it's forced on me. So you don't get excited like we do about the whole mm. build-up to Christmas number one? Okay. I'm sorry. I had to ask a question. <laughs> this story you'll like, young lady. Uh, I've got really good ears. They're just a perfect shape, not my words, but those of Victoria Beckham. I walked into the bar with her yesterday. I walked into the shop and there was a crowd outside of photographers and she was in there on the mobile phone. I, I just love her anyway. Did I you notice, her. obviously, one ear was, was covered <laughs> over by the mobile, but <laughs> did you... She wasn't serving that ear up. She was keeping it for private with David. <laughs> is David her husband? Yes. I don't know who they are. I know who she is, because she's in the Spice Girls. I didn't actually... Um, my boyfriend, Michael, told me what David Beckham did. I had no idea what he did, because I don't watch football. I think in football, yeah. give them all the ball and everyone can go home happy. Yeah, I agree. More goals. That's what there should be. It's just an excuse to men to finger men, and that's rugby, yeah. Yeah, but it's all exactly. the same thing. It's all cuddling. Um, she loves you. She was asked... Well, I, you know, I adore, I adore the woman, and I wouldn't have thought that she even knew that I existed yesterday, because I said, hi, and she went... And then I went, excuse me, do you know who I am? She went, and then sailed off. <laughs> into the distance, but that, kind of when you like someone's work, you don't necessarily have to meet them as a human being, but she did, apparently, <laughs> I've heard this, put me on her I've top, her top ten did a guest list, someone said with Tolstoy, yes. Tolstoy's are us, um, thinks it's a toy shop, um, <laughs> and Victoria invited me around for dinner because I'm bloody hungry, so no, I think she's great, can you just do that portion of the question one more time before I move on? Yeah. 
<laughs> well, she's lovely and she's all scrubbed and lovely and she's Mrs. Kind of, what's that crap John Lennon song? Working class hero. Right, that's yeah. what she is to you. Without I don't know anything about the working classes, but I know that they exist. They civilians. <laughs> yeah. They're out there somewhere. They're the civilians. Um, Look how ugly they are. That's why they pay us so much. <laughs> 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 That's a Marlene Dietrich quote, not mine. It's a good one. I don't even care. And it doesn't something. have a swear word in it. I'm beginning to sweat. Your turn. No, can I, I interrupt you? She took her daughter on a public train and she said to her daughter Maria, Look how ugly everyone is. No wonder they pay me so much money. <laughs> I thought that was pretty genius in the Blue Angel. This man <laughs> cancelled his wedding, got caught frolicking with strippers and lost a pile of cash in the casino. I never did. I'm not no. saying it's oh. you. I'm not. It's not <laughs> no, don't have a go. Fortunately, Ben Affleck, who is not with us this evening, no. had films in 2003 which were a critical triumph. Only kidding, they were rubbish. But at least he knows it, Manoush Zomorodi, not sympathetically like that for Liquid News. The most gorgeously adored guest we've ever had actually leant forward and said, let me have a look at him and her. How would you describe, do you like J-Lo's look when she was in that Grecian dress? Do you think she's a, a glamour puss? I think she's a twat. No, I think that's you know what I remember. I'm going to apologise for just the third remember, time. There was this record that she did, If You Want My Love, and I just remember that she used, at the end, if you listen to the refrains of all of Jennifer, Janet, what's her name? Anyway, yeah. the cleaner. She goes, oh, oh yeah, oh, oh no. Why, why do you call her the cleaner? She, well, when I used to spend a lot of time in LA, every goddamn Mexican cleaner that burst into my room with a shower cap and shampoo, it was Jennifer Lopez. Now look, why is it all right to have a judgment in strong T-word T ways about Jennifer, but not to form an opinion about Jackson? People who might not agree because with Because she's taken up too much space because her records are crap. We, she's crap. Okay, her no, husband's no. are crap. But her the, PR's the, crap. The, no, no, no. <laughs> don't no. put me off. She's crap. Oh, and no, if we left her with her natural-born unibrow, we wouldn't want to know about her. Bleach some bitch's eyebrows, give her some highlights and some hair extensions. Woo! Okay. And a best be told then. Yeah, you best are told me. you behave. Now, uh, in other news which doesn't need apologies. Also, excuse me. Oh, more God, no. Ellen, oh, I need mean, to go to LA. Serious yeah, issues no, like I have to get to that and cleaner. Well, but, not to some, but we've got Steph. We promised you, Steph. Yes. You will behave for Steph. It's, look, Pete, have a smile, calm yourself you down. But I, I can calm yourself, calm yourself, because this woman is with us now from Los Angeles. Hi, Steph. Steph. With big Jack White Hi. news. Tell us everything you uh, know. Hey. Yeah, do, can I just I'll go back to the Justin Timberlake thing? Does this guy actually have a case? How have like, sort of E.T. and the American press, uh, how are they dealing with this lawsuit? Well, he's filed uh, this case and he was their tour manager for several years. He's filed this in court. It now remains to be seen whether they take that uh, case seriously. Okay, Steph, thank you very much. I love the ferret. Stay with us, though, because Pete loves you. We should just have you there, waving, oh. etc. You've got a commercial break now? Okay. No. No, we haven't got them. The BBC, sweet Pete. We okay. don't have them. Ask me a question. I want to ask you a bit, because I was interested earlier on about your LA, everything you'd learnt from your LA life there. Do you envy them that are secretly, you know, in the sun? Now, would you like to live there again, even though you don't like what it's doing to people's brains? Well... Considering my forthcoming single with the Pet Shop Boys, which will be released in February, oh. called Jack and Jill Party, that I'm in the process of recording. Yeah, what's, um, this? what's this got to do with living in L.A., Pete? I don't know. I just went off on a tangent because I had no sleep. But, but anyway, are you, spent... Will you be recording it there? Or will you be doing it? No, I'll be recording it here, but I thought I'd plug myself. Why not? Well, um, <laughs> Back to I, L.A. I, I spent a lot of time in Los Angeles because I had this um, L.A. management in the early 90s and almost bought up, actually nearly almost bought Betty Davis's old apartment just after she join the choir invisible mm. and then I kind of realized that everybody in LA was on antidepressants and the, I can't say the F word can I? They're not just anymore. The foobard though aren't they? They're but completely foobard. Vile, vile, vile people. Steph rises above it all. I, well yeah she shines out like a bright star. I don't know how she can possibly be there without taking huge overdoses of laxatives. And so <laughs> no, yeah. she has wit and intelligence. I bet she sobs in the hotel room once in a while. No, she no, doesn't. And no. she's got a gorgeous flat with Never my own, though, Pete. Pardon? Never my own hotel room, though, Pete. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's a disgusting place. Now, uh, but there are nice people there, obviously, but it would be very nice if the earthquake came and it fell off the planet. <gasps> Steph, thank you very much for talking to us. We'll, we'll Please. chat to you tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. Bye, Pete. Bye. Bye. -bye.
And when she goes, it always makes me feel a bit sad when she just disappears off just quickly. In other news, it's art, but not as we know it. The Prime Minister has been cozying up to David Beckham in a sauna, and it's not as genius. But on the subject of uh, looking like this, do you have one? Do you know if there's anybody out there's there? There's a whole cult of them in America. They, they get in touch with my website, therightstuff at AOL.com. I'm not just plugging up. There are, even in Thailand, oh, lady boy. there's a lot of, um, of lookalikes who do it really, really very well. There's a particularly stunning one in New York called Michael, um, Michael Ocho Grosso, who, can I have some time here? He went yes. into a car park with, um, I just forgot the guy's name, a really, really famous singer, and gave him a gobble because this guy thought he was me. That's... Fantastic. That's the kind of impact you have in car parks in America. That's what you're telling us, the worldwide appeal. But when you say, what, do you meet them? Do you like to I'm meet sure people? I who the guy was. Um, well, you can't we, say. We, we, can't we say. don't want to know. He got a couple. No, he, he thought it was me and it wasn't. But okay. We, we can't even go with the G <laughs> word anymore. No. What is this start on Sunday? There's an element yes, of look, that. Haven't you seen it? Yes. That's our Christmas decor. It's more the time, Pete Burns. It's the time. What's yeah. the time? Eight. The time yeah. is quite close to when... Still to come. <laughs> it's just too tempting. Don't say come. Complaints mounting. I'm now going to cry. Complaints mounting over naughty Jesus. Context. So I can't Kidman. say goblin, you can say come. You can in context. Stone, you can have. No, no, you can. You're allowed. Nicole Kidman has gone down under for the first time in nearly a year. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> a clearly delighted Nicole was honoured by her countrymen and women for services to being a giant at an awards ceremony in Sydney. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. I've got my Nicole Kidman fan. I love her in films, but I, I'm always a bit transfixed by those things because she always looks like she wants her glasses. She's got kind of blinky look. Okay. She can't see a thing, that's why it's a big surprise for her. We have her. to move on. <laughs> Kissing Coppers, Mother Teresa and Flicked Mashed Potato. Not the highlights of my Saturday night down the bingo, but a list of the most complained about TV programmes of all time. To which another one might be added. Oh, please. The ITC has issued an informal list of which programmes left viewers venomous. Colin Patterson has the top ten count. It's the end of the show. We have to apologise for any language if it upset you. We really do apologise. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you very much for coming in, Mr. Peaks. That's it for now, but don't miss Liquid's Christmas extravaganza at 8 o'clock. Christian O'Connell and the Cheeky Girls. We can't fit between them. Our Christmas gift to you. Sorry about the swear words. Goodbye. You swore. Wallflower back in the 80s when his single You Spin Me Right Round Like a Record made uh, number one, but uh, these days he looks uh, more extraordinary than ever. Pete Burns is here looking amazing, Thank I have you. to say. Thank you. It's really lovely to see you. It's really lovely good to see, to see you. you. I watch the show every morning. God bless him. Bless God bless him. Now, when you said when you got work done, you got cosmetic surgery, it wasn't about looking younger. What, what was it about? What were, you, what were you setting out to well, do? Well, as far, as far as looking younger, I do come from extremely good, an extremely good genetic gene pool. My right. mother was 74 when she died of lung cancer, and she probably would have easily passed for 50. Ah. Um, she was a German lady and a Holocaust survivor who'd been a German aristocrat and her father directed a couple of Marlene Dietrich's earliest films, so she was very... Uh, everything was taken away from her mm -hmm. in the Holocaust, but she lived in this sort of fantasy world where she believed that it didn't really matter what you did or what you thought or what happened as long as you looked fabulous doing so, because right. she firmly believed that the exterior influenced the inside. You know if you're feeling a bit crap in the morning mm. and you face yourself in the mirror and you don't look so crap, well it kind of meets somewhere in the middle. Oh. I would say that the quote that's run away with itself that I did it out of boredom sounds a bit like Munchausen syndrome. It was not out of boredom. Right. Um, I have very profound beliefs that I'm sure a lot of your viewers will find you know, hilarious because they haven't hit that spot yet, but um, I believe very strongly in past lives and all through my life um, I actually didn't register the person I was seeing. I always saw this person. So when I saw myself on TV or I saw myself on a magazine cover, I didn't know who it was. It wasn't really? a case of dysmorphia because I've spoken to psychologists and right. psychiatrists. It wasn't like a, 
the way people go for gender reassignment. Mm. I was very solidly seeing something that wasn't reflected back at me. So does that mean then that when you look in the mirror now, I look exactly you have as become, I looked in a lifetime before. Right, yeah. You become the person you you always thought you should be. Yeah, and there's also um, a very prominent psychic and sort of medium called Sylvia Brown, who's extremely well respected and only really known in America, who's done extensive work with the CIA and a lot of other people who takes you back to past lives. And she does find a large percentage of people who alter themselves, be it gender alteration or surgical alteration, if it, they've just got to do it. Mm -hmm. It's to restore themselves to something that they remember inside. And I know people probably think that's a very Michael Jackson thing to think, mm -hmm. but um, I've, I've researched it in depth. And are you happy with the way you look now? This is the way that you, you want to look. Are you going to do any, anything else, Pete? Or are you um, happy with what you've got? I'm completely happy, yeah. with what I've, completely happy with what I've got, and I've done everything very slowly. And um, although I'm not going to sit here and, and reel off a list of what's been done, it's a lot less than people would think. It was a point... I, I argued with somebody on live TV because they were going off about Michael Jackson saying he'd done everything. Well, I'm sorry, he hasn't done everything. It's his nose that's been altered and mm. some really, really bad tattoo yeah. makeup. Because right. if you alter the nose and reduce it, everything looks larger. Mm. If you look at early photographs of Michael Jackson in the 70s before the record company airbrushed them when he was a teenager, he had the same very prominent jaw, but that wasn't considered appropriate for somebody of his age so they softened it down oh, okay. but it genuinely I, I do know a surgeon and it is only his nose and yes it has been overdone and it's mm. a bloody disaster it is you know it is. but you You're know right. he's happy yeah. with it and i don't really think the general public are educated enough or articulate enough to judge particularly some of the journalists who write these things about him they mm -hmm. should take a good damn long look at but themselves. But also, also those those same people have have, have had a, a fair pop at you occasionally, and people do. What's the what's the sort of reaction in the street, and what do you say to people who say, you know, how could you do that to yourself? Look, at I, I get a lot of really really good responses because I think I give off a general air of of happiness with myself. It's mm -hmm. just occasionally somebody who's completely retarded, who needs a front lobe lobotomy would feel a need to air their view. But then I have a strange perspective. I didn't just become flamboyant when I was. Um, in the charts, I was like that from 13 years of age. Mm. But when fame came along with it, it makes other people feel invisible. So when they're shouting an insult at you, they're not really meaning you effing freak. They're meaning look at me, please look at me. Mm. Your, um, uh, your your whole lifestyle. You've said that you uh, you you consider yourself a, an artist and use your flesh as a as a canvas. You, well, mm. not in a pretentious way, but if you live in a house, you, you're going to alter the walls, you're going to paint the walls, you're going to buy new furniture. What I am is not really what you see on the outside. This is only the bodywork of of something that's contained inside, and I reserve the right to alter it when and how I see fit. Nobody's going to give you a hard time if you paint your living room electric blue, mm. but it's the same thing for me. This is what I live in, houses and things I move from. This is what mm. I live in. And I, I think that I'm extremely healthy and in good nick for an old boiler. And uh, <laughs> I, might, I might as well adorn it. I just think, well, like Christmas trees, why not adorn? It was the jewellery, mm. the tattoos. And, and the flowers, like which are beautiful. Mm. You've got the most incredible eyes. Mm. You've Mother's got a, eyes. You've Nothing's got amazing eyes. You're very, very beautiful. But obviously, what people will focus on is, is the work you've had done on your Lips, mouth. Yeah. Mm. But that for you, you're happy with that. That's the way you, you've seen It's kind of strange because, you know, I, I guess I, I don't even think if I'm happy with it. It was something that was absolutely necessary to be done for me, but it's, it's kind of strange. The same people who will, like, laugh at you on the street, then before you know it, they'll ask where you got it done. Mm. And I've, I've, I've worked only with, with a surgeon called Maurizio Vale, who's on the show a lot. Oh, he's on yesterday. Yes. Yeah, yes. and... I, you know, he's he sees it. This is not for everyone, but he understands my my mm. journey, and I'm awake when he does the things, and I supervise what he does, and he's wonderful. Mm. Unfortunately, Pete, we've got to wrap it up there because we're, we're about to crash into the weekend. Shame we didn't mention Thank the Pet you Shop so Boys single. Pet Shop Boys single coming out, and my greatest hits, Evolution. The Evolution, we did mention. Evolution, good Christmas present, that's for sure. Thank nice to have you on okay. the program, Pete. Thanks Thank for you. Very much. Much. Thank you. And swear someone else is throwing. Who was in the right? Who was in the right in that argument there? I mean, don't you think Chanel made a bit much of it? Well, you know, you get people going all doolally on hormones and they're going to lose their rag, aren't they? <laughs> well, uh, moving, moving swiftly on. Uh, oh. <laughs> Amanda, on the subject of losing the rags, they did seem to mentions of cats on this <laughs> show. <laughs> Pete Burns! Put a bunch of women together, they're going to 
kill each other, aren't they? It's like a pack of cats. We know. We were, we were outnumbered when we were in the house. Women turn on each other like nothing on earth. It's all to do with hormones, isn't it? That time but I mean, look, the toilet paper, when, when you're fighting about toilet paper, George, I mean, there I should have been an allowance made for Carl. Paper. She's got a terrible cold. Yeah, I've got some toilet paper here for it. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> if, if, no, seriously. If any of our, if any of our viewers at home feel sorry for them, send us, please, your used toilet paper. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. They're on TV with those x-ray lights. Never take away the makeup. I think the best punishment would be a spanking. <laughs> <laughs> a spanking? A spanking, Amanda? No. We, we, need, we need to put that you, one on you, late. You've got to hit them where it hurts, and for her, it is all about the makeup. And no. If we're, no, but if we're being evil, which the audience are, Big Brother are, I'm going to join in. No, Get honey, rid of the makeup. Honey. Get those baby lights out. Wow. Well, I must say, there's a bloodlust for she Shabnam that I hadn't expected to see. So do I. I look at it this way. If you take away the makeup, it not only punishes them, it punishes the viewers. <laughs> got a very bad And that ain't fair. That's dirty. That's dirty. <laughs> we, must be, we, we must be tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime. Now, it's time for you to take centre stage in an... Trouble, you know, my favourite bit of that was when they first got there and Chanel went into the, the first position and then Charlie went into the second and while Chanel was physically removing Shabna, I keep calling her Amy Winehouse, what's, how do you say it? Can I just call her Amy Winehouse? Yeah. When Chanel got off the first podium, did you see it to physically remove Amy Winehouse? Charlie jumped into her spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it just, it just, I don't understand. And how they could put Leslie as the least considerate and it's just brilliant, though. I well, to see it. ourselves as others see us is, of course, a difficult thing. Now, Pete, yeah. we had a similar brouhaha With over who was the most famous. Yeah. Jody Marsh thought she was the second most famous person in the world, as I recall. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's really difficult to go back and judge people over that kind of thing, because she was obviously as th thick as pig shit. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> no, she's not here to defend herself. No, I don't really care about that, George. You know, it's, it's a really alien situation to put yourself in, and to get a bunch of women to go against each other like that, it's just never going to work out, is it? As who, do you think, away. who do you think came out best in that? Surely the clever thing to do was to say, I'll go wherever you want me to go. Yeah. In fact, why don't I go at number 11? I would have, I would have gone... Ziggy got the stardust in his eyes. Well, I think, he's, I think he's incredibly neutral. They should have put a real alpha male or a misogynist in there. You know when they're going to... They'll turn on him if he chooses one. If he chooses okay. Chanel, and when he was in bed with her tonight, okay. if he right. goes for Chanel, George, there'll be trouble. George. All right. And our audience is George Gallery, Harry Pollock. I'll be back tomorrow. It's a tough job, this. It's boring, it's tiring, and it's really lonely. If this is the way things are, and if it's the way six or seven well, days... Well, the thing is, it's why it works for us, isn't it? I just think that she needs more support and more hands-on. She's a kid, she's 25, and it would drive me absolutely crazy. have got a routine, and, and the routine works. I think Leah understands that, and, you know, it's not for someone else to come in my house to tell me what not to do. Mm, well, Pete Burns says his time on Wife Swap was a living nightmare. So did he have an easier ride in his latest project, searching for a personal assistant to get his life in order? Well, let's find out. Do you know anything about me? I know about your career. I know you're from Port, Port Sunlight. Ooh! Oh, <laughs> wow! Ding, ding. You're about the same age as me, Mum and Dad. How would you look after me? Uh, if, if you want a taxi, a cup of tea or anything, and... You work on the railways at the moment. Yeah, that's true. And you're a semi-pro footballer. Yeah. What do you do on the railways? Uh, maintenance. Just doing, like, the track if it's broken and... So if my choo-choo ever breaks down, you can land it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be smutty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Pete's PA. It starts tonight, 10 o'clock, on the Living Channel. And you won't be watching, I understand. Well, it's not that I won't be watching. I haven't got satellite telly yet. We've just moved into a new home, so it's not installed. 
I've already seen the first episode. They sent me a DVD of it, and I, I, I think it's really, really good. Can you cope with watching yourself, though? Because it is the most difficult thing in the world. It's very rare that I do, but mm. lately, due to Michael, because he wants to see the shows, I've had the, uh, well, I could say displeasure of actually seeing them, and I'm pleasantly surprised by them. Good. Now, Michael is your new husband. Congratulations. Well, I haven't got an old husband. <laughs> well, you had, a, you had It's my first wife. husband, but my old wife's over there as well. <laughs> you know, we come mob-handed. How clever is that, to have a wife and a husband in well, a lifetime? Well, yeah, well, you spend that long with somebody in your life, they're not just going to vanish out of your life, are they? We were together nearly 30 years, so she's part of the team that actually helps construct me and get me here 10 minutes late. Yeah, you did very well, actually. To that was the traffic. Already. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what do you need a PA for? Oh, God, what don't I need a PA for, really? And I think the PA that we've got has probably got a, a relatively impossible job because I'm unpayable because there are certain things that, that we just do ourselves and we're very territorial about those things. And the PA that we have is supposed to make sure that I'm everywhere in time and organised. And basically I am, but then it's kind of a harassment that, that they've got to put in. Like, we were getting phone calls all the way here to say, where are you, where are you? But we were stuck in traffic and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, there's, a, there's a million things, but there are some things that, that Michael and myself want to keep hold of and some things that the mysterious PA... You see, well, I'm Mike... going to be very careful here because I can't say. No, yeah, exactly. of course, don't <laughs> give it away. Don't sorted, give it away. Yes. Michael does, does look after you, doesn't he? I mean, he's, a, he's like a manager, really. Yeah, he's, he's taken on, on, on a managerial role, but I think that the way it was portrayed in, in, in Wife Swap, you know, you have a role that you fit into for TV, and I was mortified that he seemed like the, you know, the cook and bottle washer, and I seemed to just spend life putting on makeup because it, it just isn't like that, but no. that's just TV for you, you know. I mean, it's not a, a relationship of master and servant. I read somewhere that actually you were very happy cleaning and you were a good cleaner, is that true? Well, that was, I saw that piece yesterday yeah. and it also said I was attracted to Michael because of his big bleep. And, I, and I, I never said, well, you know that interview, I don't even remember doing it. And that's not what I said at all. I hate cleaning, we have a cleaner. <laughs> so you're not happy with a bottle of bleach and a... Only if it's for my hair. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. Where is Michael, by the there way? He is. Where is? Uh, there, uh, there, there. Uh, there's he Michael. Is. Morning, Hi, Michael. Michael. Morning. He's there managed to put his rubber gloves down and his mop <laughs> and his stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> so, what sort of a boss are you? I think he'd be better qualified to answer that. I, d I don't think I'm a difficult or demanding boss at all. It's 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 an image thing, isn't it? And I'm sure you know working in TV, or, or maybe not the areas that I've worked in, that it's new to me. Mm. And people kind of create a role. And before you know it, it's all in the edit. I mean, I, I did not enjoy watching back Wife Swap in the least, because it didn't make any sense. None of the rule changes were there, and ultimately they weren't our rule changes. Mm. Um, so it, it's a bit like doing a um, reality TV but it's not real. So are you saying that uh, the in Pete's PA, which is tonight at eight on Living? Well, he wanted me um, to be a crabby old bitch, and I just wasn't like that. I mean, I, I was getting really upset when I had to actually evict people because they, the TV company chose great people to put in the house, whereas I went along and took the job, and I thought, oh, they're going to choose a load of old imbeciles and freaks, and it's going to be really easy <laughs> to get rid of them one by one, but they chose great people, so it was absolutely gut-wrenching to actually evict yeah. them, because if I could have done, yes. I'd have had them all. But then what kind of person wants to be a PA? I mean, it's like being a wife and a mum and everything, and as we saw you in Wife Swap saying, you know, um, for a mum, the job of a mum is tedious and lonely and exhausting and repetitive, and for a PA it could be the same. Well, on some levels it will be, but I think it also has a, has a very interesting, glamorous side to it. You get to meet interesting people, and I think being a PA for somebody is only one rung on the ladder. I think a good PA goes on to do other things, like they become a manager, mm. or other things, or mm. a celebrity... Celebrity, that's not a job, really, is it? But, you know, <laughs> they become a celebrity themselves. I think it's just the first rung on the ladder to work around people who are in the kind of job that we are. You're quite, uh, you have been quite scathing about the sort of reality shows and, and, and shows that create stars out of people that, that, that necessarily nothing. wouldn't have been stars before, saying, you know, that, that they're chucked into this really very bizarre world with no training whatsoever. And well, you they... don't go to college how to learn, you know, to learn how to cope with all the pressures that come onto you when you're in the public eye. And I think a lot of people can't cope with it. And, um, you know, 
we haven't got enough red carpets to fit all the celebrities on these days because I, I don't really read the magazines but lately I've actually started because Michael gets them and I'm looking at them thinking who's that what have they done who's that what have they done I, I don't really understand it well, or why people would want it. We don't see you always on red carpets and in, you, you, you actually must be picking and choosing properly where well, you I don't are. really like to go out very often. No? What's a perfect night like for it. you? We like to stay in and watch DVDs. I mean, you know, I'm kind of older now, and I've been in the in in the industry of or the filthy quagmire called showbiz for a very long time, and the excitement of all that rubbish has worn off. Mm -hmm. So we do very very simple things. We like to go walking everywhere, and we like to, you know, I've really got a bad shopping habit. That's terrible. <laughs> I haven't been to the gym for a year, but my cardio is shopping. Um, <laughs> and then we like to walk home, and then we, we go out to eat, and then we, we watch DVDs until the early hours of the morning. And sometimes you think, God, this is a really boring life. And then you think, God, compared to what other people have got to mm, do, yeah. we're really, really lucky. Well, le we look forward to seeing uh, Pete's PA. It is, uh, it is tonight. Uh, I, I, I got eight, but I think it might be ten. Is it ten o'clock? Well, I, I wrote down ten o'clock. Yeah, it's ten o'clock. Ten o'clock on living yes. is tonight. This is the CMs. kind of job we want to go into so if you two ever want to take a break call me and michael up yeah all right then <laughs> we can't enough. even get the time right so <laughs> anyway, thank you very thank much you. are you welcome Lovely thank you very much here thank is today's you. competition Anyway, nice to have you I on our show. I usually sit on his face. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, we saw you to Wife Swap. We saw Loved you it. brilliant on that. Thank Absolute you. brilliant. Did you guys see that, Wife Swap? Yeah. And didn't it just make you see that there's so many... Like, these guys have got such good hearts from what we saw on that show. And doesn't it make you see that, you know, you need people like that in this world? Because someone like Peter to change Razor's way of thinking after so About many years when he didn't and all of a sudden pete was able to do it that says something that's so brilliant that was absolutely brilliant but it's like what we said we're the new face of normal <laughs> <laughs> what is well, we normal? think we are anyway absolutely that's what you know. exactly exactly i yeah. mean people who look really normal underneath their business suits they got stock into suspenders and stuff like exactly that exactly <laughs> and if you've got of... abs you're abnormal the, yeah ha, boom, boom. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah there's now a lot of cranks out there right at least at least our mental instability is all on the outside and it comes off a cleanser. Well, we think we're great. And you've got Pete Burns PA airing on TV at yeah. the moment. Let's have a look at a clip of this, if you don't mind. These are your teams for the week, and your challenge is to arrange two fabulous dates for Michael and me. I want these dates to be original, fun, memorable, and romantic. OK. That's crap. Is yeah. it sad? It's not. Is it for the bedroom, or is it for the... While Pete and Michael explore, the team decide to buy some extra special gifts. And he wanted you to have that goodie bag and he paid for it himself. All the sax aids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to say, that is real determination. He wants this so badly, he wants to change his life, turn everything around. But and you didn't get a job to... just because you bought me a bag full of dildos. <laughs> Thank you. I must say, what kind of boss do you think you'll be? Well, I, th I don't think I'm a difficult boss. I really don't think I'm a difficult boss. I mean, ultimately, a PA that works for me, they probably will never get to see me. We don't like people running around as an intruding in our life. You know, we won't yeah. let them in the door. We like to just, you know... Yes, we talk to them through a peephole. <laughs> we have a little bit of paper under the kinky. door. bit yeah, kinky. Yeah, through a peephole is peephole underpants. I think everything but... with us seems... <laughs> to, everything comes down to sex. They, they show one clip and there's a paddle. It's not all about sex. Yeah, but that's what it's like. If us, everyone thinks yeah. everything's always sex, but we can actually hold another conversation. Well, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so we, we we're just like fantastic after sex Absolutely. last night. You know, we hey. spoke. <laughs> now you two recently just got married, so congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, you've, got a, you've got a bigger room than I have. Did you sell your pictures at all? Your... No, we didn't. No. We didn't. We didn't get involved in any of that. To be honest with you, nobody even approached us. And the whole concept of of having it on TV, we weren't really sure what we were letting ourselves in for. And on the day. It, we were in shock. I think people always expect, you know, if you're gay people, you get married. It's somehow not marriage. It's like a, a joke, or we did it because we were being filmed. And we were doing it anyway. Yeah. But I think with the kind of more mainstream papers, they've still got that kind of weird thing about the whole gay bit. I think just because you're gay doesn't mean, you know, it's yeah, just absolutely. what you do in the bedroom. Marriage is marriage at the end and of the day. And love that. is love. And yeah. love is love, as we know. Now, lots of the viewers and the audience here know you from Big Brother. What made you do that? Money. 
Seth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no, I, I'd been... I'd, my career just completely finished cos I was in Italy having a lot of reconstructive surgery for a very, very serious condition. And I was stuck there for almost two years, having two or three operations a week, and they're still not over. I got an injectable solution, uh, and to, to be brutally frank, it nearly killed me. Whereabouts did I you have that? In the lips, but it went in the jaw, in the throat, it moved into the cheek, I had kidney failure, thrombosis everywhere. So it was a very serious medical condition, and people make a lot of jokes about it. Yeah. And I did a show last week, uh, The Weakest Link with Ann Robinson, and to be honest with you, it was the worst experience I've ever had, because you just kept making jokes about it, and I thought, you know what? Yeah, that's I really want to punch you right in the face because you haven't got a you haven't got a clue what but i've been had through surgery anyway yeah but people think plastic surgery and reconstructive surgery are the same thing yeah. this was a life or death issue yeah. and it's still ongoing now later on in the show we're going to play a plastic surgery game now Do i get to have some well hopefully we both can i have in three weeks anyway what are you getting done tits Another pair. Smaller, more pair. Another pair. No, you're <laughs> not, <laughs> extra. I'm gonna say you're not getting them on the back, so you're just going more modest. Yeah. You also were a hairdresser, which I didn't know this. That was when I was like 15. That was that, <laughs> yeah, but that we was did two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was when I was 15. It was in the early 70s that I was a did hairdresser. Did you leave? Did you get fired? I got fired. You got fired. <laughs> yeah. Now what we did is we went on the internet and we found this UKHairdressers.com, and there's apparently these alternatives to hair products, to shampoos, even if you haven't got water. So I don't a hat mind or doing a it. Wig. Yeah, a hat or a wig. <laughs> well, I don't mind doing it, but can you just come over with me? I don't mind. I don't mind. Can you take care of my ring? Will you take Which care ring? of my ring? I need to know what later. I honestly. I was going to say to him, yeah, can absolutely. you take care of my ring? But I thought he would have got offended. I need to take care of one person's ring and he take care of mine. Right, that's fantastic. Okay, what are we going to do, Dran? Right, no. This is what we're going to do, right? I need a volunteer. So can I have. I think it's Stacey Laurie. Stacey, how are you? Now, can you just take a seat and if you don't mind leaning back? Which end are we washing? <laughs> All right, ready? Don't worry, I'm Does just. Does she doing know what you're gonna do? No. If you use Coca-Cola, believe it or not, apparently it says here, pour a can of Coke, Sprite if you're a blonde, into a spray bottle, we won't bother doing that, with some water. <laughs> We haven't got water at this stage, so mist it onto damp hair. This creates a very sexy texture. Or in our case, because there's no water, we'll just put it on. You've not mixed it with water? No, because so just she's in just case... going to look like someone who's in a flame bar. <laughs> but apparently... I've done this to hundreds of people and it wasn't to give the hair a sexy texture. <laughs> apparently, just... that's what it does. But do you know what? If you pour this on your body, the Brazilians say it gives you a dark tan because of the caffeine attracts the sun. It's true, I've done it loads of times. Not that that's you can. That's why you look white. Shut up, woman. Right, anyway, <laughs> so let me just try this. Yeah, but apparently, uh, look, I don't you know. know what I can do say it. already that's a really sexy it's a stu texture. <laughs> right, wait a second, wait a second. Now, if you're out and about. That's so sexy, I'm getting a hard on. <laughs> I am, but I'm standing behind, so Kate can't see. Yeah, so am I, and the sink's going to hit the ceiling. Oh, that God. is so wait a sexy. Second, wait a second, let's just do something here. Let's just do something. Have you been a hairdresser? Let's do it. Might I make up? Let's please. do an Andre, an Andre little curl, or, or even, a, even a Jackson, right? I saw Jackson. I saw oh, him I there. love him. I love Jackson. Right, ready? <laughs> anyway, I reckon well, apparently this works. I don't really think it did work. Can you sit up for a sec here? Put that on there. <laughs> Do you think sexier or not really? <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing coke, darling. Right, thank you very much. <laughs> See you later. That's good. That's what it says on the website. Okay, where's Hayley yeah. Greenacre? Hayley Greenacre. Hi, Kayleigh. Right. Hayley, how are you, Pete? Hi. Nice to meet you and Pete. Hi, hon. Oh, you can't do this to her. No, wait a second. This one's interesting. Pete, <laughs> oh, that one's do all you right. want to read that? Is that all right? That one's all right. This one makes more sense than all of them. Talcum powder. It gets rid of grease in the hair, but she's going to look like Granny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so apparently you just pour this on, right? And what does it do? You lightly sprinkle it on the hair. Gets rid of the grease. Hair, gets rid of the grease. Okay. Okay, well, this it's I can greasy. understand. Yeah, it's a bit greasy. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean it like that, but it is. <laughs> All right. All right, let me just do this for a sec. <laughs> the only thing I don't understand is about the dandruff of, like, how it runs like dandruff. Sorry, darling, at least you're going to smell like a nice baby's ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, could you sit up for a sec? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. If she had time to brush that out and put some silicone shine product on, it might look OK. Yeah, it might do. Well, you were the hairdresser, so... Gee, you don't 
Oh, it's very like Marie that. Antoinette. Oh, well, I don't know how to brush bloody hair, Kate. I don't do hey, yours. You've got extensions. Your right. <laughs> Listen, you know what? I'm so sorry, Dad, but just <laughs> enjoy the rest of the show, and I I'm really sorry. That's what it was told. I don't know. I never tried it. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. And I just want to say thanks to Pete Burns for being a fantastic sport and to Michael Simpson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pete, you've been far too busy to be worrying about this show, haven't you? I'm much bigger than that's disgusting. You've got those. Ridiculous. Huh? You've got those. Well, you worried though, didn't it? <laughs> Was that it, those? Kate? No, do you know what? I saw these and I had to take a second look. And then I looked at that bit and I thought, Pete's definitely smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Lee. We're going to be chatting to you in a minute. And please welcome back Mr Louis Walsh. <laughs> now, you three are going to be tonight's Tats Factor judges. So let's have a reminder of who's on the board so far. And because of popular demand, I'm going to bring back my Dr Evil voice. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> OK. So after four weeks, down three places, what a bummer for Jay's bum eyes. <laughs> He's boldly going nowhere at number five. No movement for Kevin's Star Trek. <laughs> at number four, it's another non-mover for Sam's Christmas story. She's got two men on her back, lucky bitch. <laughs> it's a new entry at three for Julie's duo, Ozzy and Dallas. More rock legends at number two with poor status quo. And for the second week running, it's the Great Dane with a fried English breakfast on his head. Give me a frickin' break, it's getting ridiculous. How <laughs> you doing, Brian? Nice to meet you. Nervous? Yeah. <laughs> guys, girls, would you like to see what Brian's got? Yeah. Yeah! yeah. Guys, let's have a look. Yeah. Tats, out, tats out! Yay! Tats out! So, obviously, we know that's Elvis. Is this the Cadillac he bought for his mum? It is, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. You can turn around, Brian. We don't have to talk to your back. <laughs> All the best with that. A round of applause for Brian. I hope you do well tonight. Yeah. Here you go. How are you going, Jamie? Nice to meet you, Jamie. You don't look like the type either to have a tattoo. Ah, uh, well. Oh, I wonder where you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's have a look. Get your tattoo! <laughs> Tap, 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 tap. Okay, so Shrek. Shrek, yeah. Um yeah. explain. Is Shrek kind of your personality? Is that why you'd say I'm the lovable Obi, yes. Nothing to do with <laughs> looking like or What are you trying to say? Well, no, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, well, you know, you obviously fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yes, no. It didn't hurt. No, three and a half hours. Jamie, I hope you do well. Thank you very much. Tonight's challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So do you get a call? Well, yeah. I've just seen Hello. something. Hello, people. Louis, you you'll be impressed with this. Oh, Hello, all right. Thank you. <laughs> well, don't keep us waiting. I think you should get your tats out! So, okay, so it's Westlock. What are you writing? Where's Brian? Yeah, where's Brian? Where is Brian? Brian? Down further. Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't put Brian on this one. Why didn't you? Why you could turn back round again now. Why didn't you put Brian on? Well, when I was in the middle of having it then, Brian decided to uh, bugger off, so I saved myself 85 quid. <laughs> is, is that how much it cost? Huh? It was 85 for each or 85 for yeah. oh, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Now. Oh, well, I hope oh, you okay. do well, Beth. Thank Round of applause for Beth. Yeah. Okay, so judges, please show me the one tattoo that you want to go on the leaderboard. It's It's Westlife. <laughs> Which position would you like them in? I'll put Westlife at the top. Yeah. 
That means that our new number one is Westlife by the If you have a tattoo or know someone who does, just email a photo and your contact number to Katie and Peter at ITV.com. Thanks. Young Wolf and Ling Ryan. Wait, can I just ask one question? Yeah. Could you like both? Who do you fancy, me or Pink? No, yeah. that's something. Hey! <laughs> well, she's gorgeous, isn't she? Tonight, head to head, Katie and Peter will have to know their surgery. Okay. They will meet people who have all gone under the surgeon's knife and they will have to guess what they have all had done. Peter and Katie, on your board you have various cosmetic procedures to choose from for each person. I will award points for correct guesses and the person with the most points at the end of the game wins. Happy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Katie happy. and Peter, please take your positions by the board over there. And just to warn you, there are a couple of red herrings. Ooh. So, let's meet our first person, please. Okay, okay. This. No, I mean, okay, is in okay, okay. Shut up. Yeah. This is Joanne. Peter and Katie, I can tell you she's had one piece of work done. And you have ten mm. seconds to choose the procedure from your board. Okay, your time starts now. I'm gonna go straight away. Straight away. <laughs> time's up, time's up. Okay, there are your suggestions. Joanne, can you please spill and tell me and them what you had done? I just had my nose done. Ah! Just Miserably. The That's just the beginning. Okay, you can leave. On to the next person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, this is John. Peter and Casey, I can tell you he's had three pieces of work done. This time you get 20 whole seconds to choose the procedures from the board. Your time starts now. Okay, there's your suggestions. John, please tell us exactly what you had done. Definitely I've had a nose job, dental I... veneers, and a chin implant. Okay, that's oh. fine. Can we please welcome okay, the next great. person? <laughs> Is this it? is Leah. Can you can you shut your hole? Can you shut your hole? Sorry. Shut your hole. This is Leah. I can tell you she's had six well, pieces of that. work I'm done. Not, I'm thinking. You've okay. got 40 seconds to choose the procedures from your board. Your time starts now. Right. Um. It's gone. <laughs> okay. Can you reveal your time's up? Sorry. There's your suggestions. Leah, can you please tell us everything you've had done and don't hold the horses? Everything. Everything. Uh, Botox? Yeah. Eyelids? Yep. Nose? Yep. Facelift? Yep. Electrolysis? Yep. Adam's apple? Yep. And nothing below the waist? Uh, really? And, and, nothing and else deepening of the voice. Yes. So you are a man in a woman? I'm a man. OK, brilliant. Wow. <laughs> That means after today's game, nobody got anything right. Mm. So there are no points and no winners. You both should be thoroughly ashamed of yourselves. Oh, that means the overall scores are still two to Peter and one yeah. to Katie. <laughs> Next week, we'll be doing another Katie and Peter challenge. Don't miss it. That's all we've got time for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks to our guests, Lee Ryan, Lily Ryan. Simpson and the wonderful Pete Burns. We'll see you next Friday at 9 o'clock. The weekend's now open for business, so why don't you shop like Katie Holmes, party like Kate Boss, and love like Katie Price? feel happy or make me laugh or something. All of my criticisms are only levelled from my own point of view. I'm not criticising it. It probably yeah. is one of the greatest albums of all time, but I don't feel qualified to actually stand up and fight for it. Yeah. I don't care.
Um, <laughs> you're, you're cool, man. You're, you're right on. Oh, thank you. Speak your mind, man. Yeah, well, that's what it's about. That's, yeah. you know, everyone has a different opinion. There's five of us here, and we all like music. I think I was a music fan before I went to work at Stock Aiken Mossman. I'm not saying that in a bad way, but they were so brutal. They, the, if you they make ripped an the album, music out of your soul? Well, yeah, because they, you'd put something on, they'd say, crap, they just dismiss things so quickly. And I got very much into that mentality as well. Being in this business can harden you because, you, you know, you, if you're in music all the time, you yeah. know, sometimes you don't want to have music on at home. Yeah. It's a filthy mm. job, isn't it? It's soul <laughs> destroying. I'm jaded. You're jaded. Yeah. Hey, everyone's jaded every day. Hey, if, you, if you're jaded, God help me. <laughs> hey guys, guys, we're, we're only on our We're only on our album, we've got 20 more to go. <laughs> Continuing the anti consumerism vibe is an album that some might argue should be. Highbrow, lowbrow, vulgar comedy, and self doubt. Nobody does it more convincingly than Morrissey. Combined with Johnny Marr's jangly stylings, The Queen is Dead is a classic, and it's at number seven. What do we think? Morrissey, the most interesting songwriter of his generation? Well, I knew him personally. That's how I, how I came to get familiar with his music. He actually gave me a copy of this album. Wow. And uh, it was the first Smiths album that I'd actually listened to, and I loved it from track one. He sings his life. I think he does it very well. What's he like? Really difficult, <laughs> awkward. He stopped talking to me over a fur coat. Because <laughs> I had a fur coat, he said, if you ever wear that again, I'll never talk to you again. So I did wear it again, he never spoke to me again. And to this day, he holds a grudge that I actually wear fur and things like that. But that's, if that's the way he wants to be, that's fine. It doesn't stop me appreciating him as an artist. I think yeah. he's very important in his place. You'll probably write a song about it, or maybe yeah. already has. <laughs> um, Peter, what about you? What about Smith for you? Just, you know, I just think that Morrissey kind of lyrically is kind of straight ahead of anybody else, really. Yeah. But a lot of people can't take him, can they? They think he's depressing, whereas I think he's funny. Yeah, yeah really funny. OK, uh, so now to Morrissey at his most poignant from The Queen Is Dead. This is There Is A Light That Never Goes Out. No, that's not funny, that track. <laughs> <laughs> There is a light that never goes out from the Smiths, the Queen is dead. Uh, Hugh, for you, um, you know, being American, did, did that album kind of get across to you at the time? Yeah, it did. Johnny Marr approached it in a very unique way, and as Morrissey approaches his things very uniquely, it makes for a good mix, and mm -hmm. I think it's a great record and deserves to be there. Suggs? Uh, yeah, I, I came across Morrissey a few times, and uh, yeah, I found him equally um, interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't get the Smiths straight away, no. And that thing about them being depressing, um, you know, heaven knows I'm miserable now and all that. And it was, just took me a little while to realise that he was being... It's the irony, isn't it? You know, and, yeah. you know, every day is like Sunday and all that. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> but actually, you know... There's a lyric in The Queen is Dead, Oh, Charles, don't you ever crave to appear on the cover of the Daily Mail dressed in your mother's bridal veil. <laughs> Vicar in a tutu, stuff like that. There's, there's some great humour in there. I, I really get his humour. People think you're being miserable, but you're not really. It's not humour that translates that well. Mm. Mm. And uh, as you mentioned, that kind of brilliant marriage of, mm. of that kind of ironic lyrics in there and the guitar band element. Uh, OK, now, I know what you're thinking. Surely it doesn't all have to be shoegazing and angst, so... Love action. It's 1981 and out of England began to come a sound. Not disco, not rock, not punk, but something else. At number six, it's the Human League's landmark album, Dare.
We're all just singing along to all the songs from that album, though. Even though it's so 80s, it doesn't age, does it, Peter? Why is this in the top ten? It's an astonishing album, really. It's, it's something that at the time was totally experimental, got no real instruments used on it, and has inspired several generations of electronic musicians. Hence why it's still relevant. Uh, here's an example of how perfectly they constructed original pop songs. It's Don't You Want Me Baby. Do you say so, Pete? Without doubt, massively influential. This album, it made me feel happy. Good. Do you remember if, if from, you know, from when it was out? Well, it was inescapable in the 80s. I probably really loathed it in the 80s because it was all I ever heard was the Human League League's album. It actually sounds better today to me than it did then. Still relevant today? Yeah, still very relevant today. Um, Huey, what about the Human League for you? Uh, well, when I was growing up, I kind of missed a lot of it, but it was on MTV and you did see a lot of it. They did uh, influence a lot of the electronic bands that came after them. Little soap operas, that's what I kind of saw the songs as almost being little soap operas. I was imagining in Sheffield somewhere they were having like they were having like real problems with each other and wrote songs about them. They're like, yeah, well I found you in a cocktail bar. No. <laughs> <laughs> real life. Yeah. Real life in Sheffield. Um, Peter, for you they're they're a band that um you see is still being incredibly influential and important still. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, as a band, their catalogue, I think, has been patchy, but uh, as an example of an album, album where everything yeah. came together and made sense, I think this, this works perfectly. You still play, you still hear it. Go out to you know, the coolest places in East London or wherever, and you'll hear some track from this. Yeah, and you can hear it in a good karaoke bar around the corner. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, so, music aficionados, time for another break now. Anything missing? <laughs> well, I was going to ask how you could put it on and listen to it in its entirety. Because I'm a music fan? Yeah, I couldn't. Why? I just couldn't. Uh, I, the affectation of his of his of his vocals, lyrically. Liam's and Noel's or just uh, Liam's. I don't know which one's which. Okay. I don't know the difference. I just could not stand it. You, you, I remember you're too, chained, too much P. Waterman. Chain to the mirror and the razor blade, and uh, I think that's one of their lyrics, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I thought that was quite witty, but that that was about it. I just couldn't go with it. Okay. Huey? Uh, well, I was growing up a lot of the time. I have a lot of respect for what he actually does. Everything that Huey said, I agree with. But it's it's a very unique album. It's a great album. And I remember there was a period when people were saying, is he sort of one trick? But you know what I mean? It was that thing, you could do falsetto, you can do bass, you can do rap, you can play and sing, dance. You know, he's a, he's a crazy diminutive. Um, it's a great piece of work, but yeah. it's just not something that I could, I could tolerate. That was number two, which means that after the break, <laughs> uh, we'll be revealing the greatest album ever, according to some wouldn't take a record. I'd no. take a book instead. <laughs> All right, well, I'm about to reveal what we're given tonight. Not a fan of it myself. It didn't particularly do anything for me, but it's a perfect album. It's bland. Uh, it sold absolutely millions. Everybody loved it. I don't own it. I've never put it Why on. Why do you think it's bland? I just think it's sickeningly bland. The thing I like about this record is Quincy Jones, uh, obviously everybody knows Quincy Jones, put this record together and then kind of co-opted Michael Jackson into doing it. So it was kind of like already done, in a sense, and then he said, oh, Michael Jackson could sing it. And it was the one that kind of like pushed him out there in front mm. as, as not the one of the guys from Jackson 5, but like... Uh, I just fi I find Michael Jackson much more interesting than any of his albums. Yeah, that's true. I've heard this album so many times in different people's homes and things like that. I've, I've heard enough of it. Do I think it deserved number one? Well... I guess so if you go in on volume of sales, but personally I'd have preferred Purple it's, Rain no, to be number one. it's not just volume of sales, you preferred? Purple Rain to have okay. been number one because it was more unique. Peter? Well, I, I was in the, um, the kind of judging panel for this and we were trying to figure out what, oh, you know, so it's you. what order they <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's difficult because on one hand we, we wanted to kind of resist the inevitability of Thriller being the best album of all time because people keep saying it's the best album of all time. but. Even though some things sometimes sound bland, I think it's just because we hear them so much. And the reason we hear these songs so much is because everyone plays them and wants to play them so much. Exactly. Um, and you can't you can't mark something down for that. In, in mm. it's you know the biggest artist you know studio album of all time. All, how many songs are it? Were singles? It's There's seven out of nine. Again, but we're going back to sales, aren't we? It's like how um, many did it sell? How many did it? Just, you know, the, the, but just the way it's the, the way it's kind of influenced so many different types of musicians even it's kind of endlessly kind of homaged and parodied and referenced and songs are covered and sampled mm. um you know from kind of thriller to billy jean these, you know these songs are kind of everywhere and they feel like they're kind of the part of people really sometimes so yeah. um although it's inevitable that it would be the best album of all time that wasn't a reason 
Would you yeah. make it that? Did London Calling come up in the <laughs> argument at all? Too early. Too early. Oh, there was you it go. Okay. Um, listen, thank you all very much. Uh, I'm about to leave you guys with another massive hit from our number one greatest album ever, Thriller, which means I have to say bye bye and thank you very much for all your comments and uh, all your thoughts. Music discussions are always very heated and very interesting. You can go to the website to agree or disagree with our countdown. Check out our full shortlist and vote for your ultimate winner. We'll be showing the results of that on the 11th of.